Hey guys, and welcome back to another Django tutorial. Now I know I said I was gonna be doing like custom user models here, but the thing is to do what I wanted to do, I actually don't need to use those and they're way, like they're they kind of overcomplicated. So I figured we'll just do it the pro, like I guess the proper way or the way you're supposed to do it. And then if you guys need to look up how to do custom user models, it's not like super hard. Uh, but just go online, there's a few decent tutorials for that because I don't think I'm going to cover that in that series unless you guys really want that and you leave that as a comment down below. But anyways, the goal of this video is to make specific to-do lists for specific users so that when different users log into the website, they see different to-do lists. Just like, you know, if you're on Facebook, you're going to see different posts, like stuff like that, right? So it's going to be a little bit more custom to each user and obviously they can save their own to-do list and that'll be saved just for them and other people shouldn't be able to view that. So what I'm going to do, and I need to do this, is inside of our models.py file, inside of our main application, I'm going to just add a foreign key to to-do list, which is user. And then that way our users will have a to-do list set where we can view all of the uh, the different to-do lists uh, with that user. So to do this, I need to start by importing our user model. So to get that, I'm going to say from Django.contrib.auth.models import user with a capital U. Now what I'll do is just add a foreign key. I'm just going to copy this and just change the names here. Instead of to-do list, we'll say user and we'll do user right here. So we'll have user models up foreign key. So now we're saying that essentially every to-do list we create will be linked to some kind of user. Awesome. So now uh, what we need to do is actually make some migrations in our file so that uh, we're gonna update our database accordingly to that. Now, you shouldn't run into any issues doing this. Uh, it should just like create the migrations for you. But if for some reason this doesn't work, what you need to do is delete all of your database files. So delete your database file, delete all of the, um, everything inside of your migrations folder, including the pi cache, but not the init.py files. And that goes for all of your migration folders. So any migration folder, delete everything except this init.py. And then anywhere you see a pi cache folder, delete that. And that'll allow you to do the migrations after that. So uh, now that we've done that, what do we need to do next? Well, now when we create a to-do list, things are a little bit different. So this is where we're creating a to-do list. And what we're doing to do that is just creating a new to-do list and saving it in the database. But now we need to save the to-do list to a specific user. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to say response dot user um, dot to do list underscore set. Now, I don't know if this is going to have to be capital or not. So we'll have to play with that in a second. But I think it should just be like that dot create. And in this case, we'll give a name to our to-do list and we'll say the name is going to be equal to N. Now, I believe this is how you create it. I'm going to go look to see how we created the item. Yeah, so that is it's a similar way. So we'll test this to see if that's working. But this should now be saving our to do list to a specific user. Now we can still access our to do list by doing the slash ID of those to do lists. But we're going to probably modify this a little bit so that you're only able to access uh, to do lists that are yours. So that'll mean we'll look at the ID and then we'll see if that's in the user set. And if it is, then we'll show that. Otherwise, we'll say like you don't have access to this to do list or something. But let's first just make sure that we can create them. Okay. So another thing that I'm going to do actually is we've created this. Um, if I go to templates, we've created. Um, no, we have not created, but in our base.html, sorry guys, we have this slash view here, right? And this originally, I think I had it linking to two just to test stuff. But what I want to do is actually make this uh, go to a list of all of our different to do lists. So I've created this slash view. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a URL inside of our URLs here that is going to be slash view. And what slash view will do is it'll bring us to a list of all of our to do lists. So I'm just going to say the function name will be view, the link will be view, and the name will be view. And then what we'll do is we'll create a new, uh, I guess, function inside of views.py. And we'll say define view response. And then what we're going to do is we're going to return a render of in this case, we'll say response view and or main slash view dot html and then we'll pass nothing as the context 
So now we've done all that, we actually need to create a view template. So I'm just going to make a new file and I'm going to save this as view.html and I'm just going to extend this from the base template. So extends base dot main slash base dot html and then we will add our blocks so we need that block for the title so we'll say block title like that and then end the block so percent percent and block and then inside here i guess we'll just do like view and then we can copy this and just change the name to uh to content so con content like that and then inside of here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create uh, a for loop that's going to loop through all of the different to do lists for our user and display them. It'll be very, very basic, but we can obviously modify it later. So let's add a for loop. So we'll say for, and in this case, TD, which is Stanford to do list in this case, user dot to do list underscore set. Then what we'll do is we'll end the for loop and and for and then in here we're going to create some links to all of our to-do lists and display them just in little paragraph tags so i'm just going to say p and in this case we'll add the name of our to-do list uh i guess we'll add a link here so we'll say a we'll say href equals in this case slash and we'll say td dot id and then we will end that a tag so slash a and then end the p tag slash p and here we'll just put the name of our to do list, which in this case is simply going to be td dot name. Alright, so that should display all of our to do lists in just like a standard I don't know, like list kind of form, we could make it look nicer. But for now, we're just going to go with that. And yeah, and then we should be able to click on them to access those to do lists. So let me see if this is actually working. So let's run the server. Any errors? Let's see. Uh, no errors. So let's now go back to here and so I'm going to create, let's just go to the home page and let's go to view. Okay. So view are uh, not running into any issues, but we're obviously not seeing anything. So now let's try to create a to-do list. So if I say Tim, create new and we run into an area, no attribute to do list underscore set. I thought that was going to happen. So let me see now if we need to add the capitals to that or not. So inside views uh, to do list underscore set maybe that's the issue i don't know we'll see though and then i guess we're gonna have to change inside of our view.html file to be capitals as well now if this doesn't work i'll quickly do a little bit of research and figure this out but let's try it now and let's go back to slash create can continue has no attribute to do list underscore set so, all right i'll be back in one second guys with the proper attribute name for that all right, I am back and with a ton of errors that I had to fix. So essentially one of the first errors is we need to go here and change this to be user dot to do list dot all because I was trying to loop through something that's not iterable because this is a different object. So just to put this all here, you don't need the brackets after and leave this as lowercase to do list. And then what we need to do is go to models and we need to add these two fields to our uh, foreign key so we have to say related name and we're going to define this as to do list and then null equals true now essentially the related name is going to be the way we access this from the related object which is user so we just change that to to do list we say null equals true and then what we're going to have to do to save that is make migrations so you know python manage.py make migrations python manage.py migrate you do that you should be set and then the last thing we have to change is inside views.py is what I've done here is I've created a new to do list so I said t equals to do list name equals n exactly what we had before same thing with saving the to do list except now I said response dot user dot to do list dot add t and then we can still link back to that ID because that ID is perfectly valid it still exists so we can see that and everything works fine. So that is the fixes. That's what we need to do. Remember that once you change these, this models file by adding the related name and the null equals true, you need to make migrations to save those changes and then rerun the server. So I'll show you now what it looks like. So essentially you can see I have two to do lists that say hello. When I go, I can add items to the to do list. So let's say like item one, add item. There you go. We can check it. We can save it. All that fun stuff. If I go to view, um, 
it should be showing me this, but for some reason that's not happening. Um, let's see here. Let me try logging out and logging back in. So let's say slash log out and let's say slash log in. And let's go Tim password, sign in view. And there we go. We can see that we have now these popping up. So we have to be logged in to be seeing these. If we're not logged in, we are obviously not going to see anything because we don't have any of these. So now let's try to create another account and add some of our to do list to that account and then see if it's different than what we had before. So let's say we'll make an account. Let's say the email is Bob at tech with Tim net. Let's say the password is the password I've been using consistently. And there we go. Let's hit register. All right, so we don't need to save that, but now let's go to view and we're still seeing hello twice, which is interesting to me. Oh, it's because we're not logged into uh, that account. So let's do slash login. And then what we'll do here is we'll say Bob and password and login and go to view. And obviously there's nothing there. So let's create a new to do list. Let's go new list, create list. Let's go to view and now we can see that we have new list showing up and that is working. Now I'm sure this is fairly buggy, but this gives you an idea of how you can add things to specific users so you can see them on the web page. Now obviously we can make it so that you can't uh, view other people's to do lists because for example, if I go slash two, I can view the hello to do list even though that's not mine. So we'll quickly do that and then I guess we'll probably wrap up after that. So let's go to index here now and let's quickly say we'll get the to do list um, objects we will get so we'll get the to do list as an object and we'll just see if that to do list is in the users list. If it's not, then we'll just, you know, get out of that. We won't let this happen. Otherwise, we'll do whatever we already have. So we'll simply just say if in this case response dot user dot I guess to do list dot all like that, but we'll say if ls in that, then this is valid. Otherwise, so we'll tab all of this in. Otherwise, we'll simply just return. We can either give an error or we could just like not let them go to this page. And to do that, we can just link maybe to the home page or something if they try to do that. So I mean, you guys can pick what you want to do there. But I guess I'll just going to ring uh, link to our home page here. So we'll just link to home dot html. And we'll just say in this case, or actually maybe let's instead of going to home, let's go to view.html because then that way they can view their to-do list. So maybe that makes more sense. So now let's try this. So let's try to go to two now, refresh, and you can see that now it's simply bringing us to new list because well, that's not our to-do list. So if I go to three, you can see new list is valid because that's our to-do list. So we're able to view that. Now this is probably not the most secure way to actually like hide information just with like this if statement and all that. But I mean, you guys can mess with that if you want. And this is a very, very basic example. So anyways, that is kind of been it for how to add the to do list to specific users, how to see that. I know the login and logout system isn't super smooth right now, but you can obviously add that on the side. My main goal with these tutorials was to give you guys kind of the starting blocks on how to do things, ideas on how to go about stuff. I really can't show you possibly everything because it's an infinite amount of stuff that you can do with Django. And with that being said, I will hopefully be doing a deployment tutorial soon. It probably won't be for the next few days, but at some point I definitely will do one and I encourage you guys to remind me and get on me if I'm not doing a deployment one because I will do that at some point. And that has kind of been it for the actual writing code and all of this of the Django tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions or future videos you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments down below and I guess I'll see you in the next video.